So, as we have seen, bonding orbitals tend to draw nuclei together, and antibonding orbitals tend to push nuclei apart. We can set up a simple relationship where if we assume that the effects of bonding orbitals are cancelled out by antibonding orbitals, we can predict the strength of a bond by looking at the net number of electrons in bonding orbitals. This is formalized as the number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals divided by 2 is equal to something called the bond order. Bond orders can be directly related to what type of bond is in between the atoms. So for instance, a bond order of 1 means that there is a single bond between the pair of atoms. A bond order of 2 means there is a double bond, and a bond order of 3 means there is a triple bond. Let's look at a few examples now about calculating bond orders. In this first example, we're going to look at calculating the bond order of H2+. And so in this case, we have the 1s orbital on one of our hydrogen atoms. We have the molecular, or the, sorry, the atomic orbital, the 1s from the other hydrogen atom. And as we saw, these form two molecular orbitals. One is a bonding orbital, and the other one is an antibonding orbital. Now since this is H2+, we actually only have one electron. And so that one electron then populates inside the 1s molecular orbital. Or in this case, sorry, we'll just call it a sigma orbital, where the antibonding orbital we'll call sigma star. And so then if we follow the bond order, or how we calculate bond orders, is that we would say number of electrons in um, bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals divided by 2. Well, in this case, since we have one electron in a bonding order orbital, then I'm going to write 1 minus, I have no electrons in the antibonding orbital, so I'll write a 0 there. I'll divide that by 2. And so the bonding, or the, the bond order in this case is equal to 1 half. Let's now look at the bond order of molecular hydrogen. So in this case, we can draw the exact same diagram where I have my 1s orbital and my 1, my 1s orbital and my other hydrogen atom that I'm bringing together. This again forms two molecular orbitals, where one is the bonding and the other one's the antibonding. And in this case, each hydrogen has one electron. And so that means then that we populate both of them inside the bonding orbital. And so when I calculate the bond order, then what I would say is number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals divided by 2. In this case, now I have two electrons in bonding orbitals. I still have zero in antibonding orbitals. And so that means I have a bond order of 1. And so what this tells us is that when I ionize H2 into H2+, plus, I actually weaken the bond between the two hydrogen atoms. That's what these bond orders are telling us given that the bond order of H2 is a larger number than the bond order of H2+. Plus. Finally, let's look at H2-. Minus. So I've now added a third electron to this system. So again, I draw my molecular orbital diagram. There's my one hydrogen atom. Here's my other hydrogen atom. I again draw my antibonding orbital, my bonding orbital. And in this case, I now have three electrons in total where now I still populate two into the bonding orbital, but now I actually put one in the antibonding orbital. And so now I calculate the bond order, number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals divided by two. And so in this case, again, I can write two, but now I subtract one and divide by two, and I get one half again. So what this ends up telling us is that Molecular hydrogen, the H2, ends up having the strongest bond out of these three cases, where if I add an extra electron, I weaken the bond, and if I take away an electron, I also weaken the bond. And so this is part of the predictive power of how bond orders can tell us how strong the bonds are between atoms. Based on the molecular orbital diagram presented earlier, we can create a table which includes the ground state electronic configuration and the bond order of each diatomic molecule. We can also include measured values for the bond length and the bond energy. If we plot the bond order, the bond energy, and the bond length, 
we can see the intuitive relationships that we would expect. As the bond order increases, the bond energy also increases, and the bond length decreases. Conversely, as the bond order decreases, so does the bond energy. This correlates to an increase in bond length. This demonstrates the qualitative predictive power of bond order to determine the strength of bonds, which is based on the quantum mechanical treatment of molecules. We can also build molecular orbital diagrams for diatomics made up of two different atoms. The exact molecular orbital diagram depends on the wave function solutions to the Schrodinger equation. However, the energy of the bonding orbitals are more closely aligned with the energy levels of the more electronegative atom, while the energy of the antibonding orbitals are more closely aligned with the less electronegative atom. One final example, we can look specifically at the molecular orbital diagram of NO. The energy of the bonding molecular orbitals for this molecule follow more closely the atomic orbitals of the more electronegative atom, in this case being the oxygen. The energy of the antibonding molecular orbitals follows more closely the atomic orbitals of the less electronegative atom, in this case nitrogen. We can also determine a bond order from this molecular orbital diagram. There are eight electrons in bonding orbitals and three electrons in antibonding orbitals. This means the bond order is five halves, implying that the bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen is quite strong. In this lecture, we examine molecular orbitals and their relationship to bonding in order to qualitatively understand the strength of bonds as described by quantum mechanics. We saw that two types of molecular orbitals exist, bonding and antibonding, where bonding molecular orbitals are lower in energy than antibonding orbitals. Based on this, we can build molecular orbital diagrams which we can use to calculate bond order. Bond order is a qualitative value which can be used to determine trends in bond strengths.